the population over the last 50 years has gone from three to eight billion. And the next 50 years, it's expected to go from eight to 12 billion. Most of that growth is gonna be in the African continent. Um, that's gonna show, we're gonna have a, a real boom in Africa because there's gonna be a much younger population there and that's gonna be great. We're Median, once, median age of about 18 right now. Yeah, and, and uh, really booming. And Nigeria will be the biggest of all of those. Um, and so, and, and I think that that world will rise. And so we're gonna start, and some of the other um, lesser developed countries are also gonna rise around the globe. And I think we're, we're not gonna feel so different going across borders. And I th so I think that's gonna be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned a new technology that, um, that can do all this great stuff, like you can, you can replicate meat without killing an animal, and you can, but you can also use it for bio warfare. That's always been our choice. Whenever there's a new technology, that technology first tends to win all the wars but it also tends to move society forward in a, a magic and imaginative ways. Uh, and I think that's always gonna be the case. There will always be the, the, the group that says, hey, how can I use this for power? And then how can I use this to improve humanity? That'll be the other group. And the ones I think that are, that are clinging to power right now are, um, I think are sort of a dying breed. I actually think that um, humanity is winning out. And it's, it has to do with social media, um, it, with all the communications vehicles we have now. I, I kind of had the sense that when we had free communication mm -hmm. around the world, when we did Hotmail and I came up mm -hmm. with the viral marketing mm -hmm. idea, well, um, that was going to really open the world up and it really has. So that we're all very, very interconnected and interrelated uh, through just friendships, but also through businesses and through uh, walks of life, different ways of operating. Um, and so that's when, when you see one country threatening another, you think, wait a second, that's just that guy, that leader, so-called leader, um, being mad at that other leader because down on the at the at the human level we already have great friends in those countries I mean I think of all this friction between the US and China that's friction between the two leaders of those countries it's not friction between us we have we have amazing relationships with all those people in China I've been working in China for 50 years 30, 40 years now and, uh, and had built some amazing relationships. And now I look at any kind of a war or whatever that kind of uh, the, the danger zone as the equivalent of just you know, shooting off your own leg in order to you know, see if you can hobble a little faster with your remaining leg. It, it really doesn't make sense, except to those leaders who are trying to cling to power. That's, that's going to be the threat. That's going to be, we are moving to a new level. Yes. Society is moving to a new way of thinking. Um, the leaders have to catch up. And it's interesting, um, the leaders of these smaller countries are going, yeah, how do I do this? How do I use Bitcoin? What do I do with, you know, how do I get more venture capital here? How do I get more citizens to come to my, my country? Um, and, they're, and they're also saying things like, wait, how did Estonia do the virtual citizenship thing? How do I do that? How, I, uh, Malaysia already has a virtual residency program and mm -hmm. Kazakhstan's working on a virtual citizenship program. So there are lots of countries that are all kind of going, huh, this is interesting.